News 3 Sports presents ODU versus NSU. Live from Eccles Hall on the campus of Norfolk State University. 50 years in the making, the Crosstown Showdown as Old Dominion pays a visit to Norfolk State for the first time in two generations. I'm Patrick Johnson. Brian Mull joins me for tonight's broadcast. When you look back, the last time Old Dominion played a game on this campus, the moon landing hadn't happened. Woodstock had not happened. Nixon was still the president. UCLA was somewhere in the middle of their uh, run of national championships, somewhere midstream. Uh, Brian, historic night. COVID's causing what would normally be a raucous crowd to be an empty arena. I think there's going to be a lot of emotion here tonight, and I think we're going to see two very good veteran basketball teams that are guard dominated. Absolutely. Two old rivals here that are finally getting together in at Norfolk State. We've got a great point guard matchup between Devontae Carter of Norfolk State and Malik Curry of Old Dominion. Can't wait to see how this one unfolds. Well, the coaches have been outspoken all week, both Coach Jones and Coach Jones for Old Dominion and Norfolk State, respectively. Let's hear what they had to say about the matchup. WTKR Sports Director Adam Winkler spoke with the coaches. Patrick, Brian, good evening. It is about 4.6 miles, roughly a 15-minute drive, to get from Chartway Arena on the campus of Old Dominion University to here, Joseph Eccles Hall at Norfolk State. But when it comes to philosophy and feelings about actually playing this crosstown showdown, the two head coaches, Robert Jones and Jeff Jones, well, they're a lot further apart than just a few miles. I still think it is ridiculous that we don't play um, more often, you know, to be honest with you. I mean, we're right there. I'm just going to say, it, it wouldn't have happened was, were it not for COVID-19. What's really going on? Why, 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 why don't we play? We, we, we don't owe it to, to anybody the same way that UVA and Virginia Tech don't owe it to us. I know they could get into, you know, every, they have everything to lose and we have everything to gain. It's like, we're not, we're not playing Duke. Somehow or another, it seems that, uh, that, that there's some sort of accusation or finger being pointed at Old Dominion. We're going to do what's best for us. Jeff is a good man, you know, honestly, no matter what we say about this rivalry, I think that he's a good coach. He's a good man. He runs a great program. But to keep saying that they have everything to lose, like, I mean, we are Division One. We schedule who we need to schedule. I, I'm, I'm not going there anymore. I'm tired of it. We want to play a basketball game against a quality opponent. After tonight's tilt, the Monarchs and Spartans currently have one more contest on the books, a game that'll be played at ODU. But folks, that won't happen until the 2022-23 season. So whichever squad wins tonight's contest, gonna have bragging rights here in Norfolk for two years. Patrick, Brian, have a great call. All right, Mike Lapp.
opportunity for Reese to take on more of the scoring load. Played here, and because of COVID, and it's blocked away. And so far, De Old Dominion has been locked in defensively. That was Carter's shot returned to sender. Good ball movement and improving his position. Oliver can't get the field goal to drop. Going to stay on this end of the floor with Old Dominion. Monarchs coming out very crisp here early. They have a lot of energy, like what they're doing on both ends, really moving the ball on the offensive end. This is a little more mobile lineup than Jeff Jones has had in past years, and, and they're taking advantage of that. Here's a three from the lefty, Curry, way off. But the Monarchs recycle, and they'll get a fresh shot clock here. Another three by Oliver this time is good, and he's got five. Timeout, Norfolk State. Robert Jones not happy with the energy his team has shown here in the early going. Brian, there, by the governor of Virginia's order, less than 300 people here, 250, probably a little less than that, honestly, in the building here. Family and people closely associated with the athletic program and Old Dominion plays in such a tough league in Conference USA they play in a lot of big environments with Jeff Jones and you had the sense that they were going to come in here and treat this like a conference game or an NCAA tournament type of game and so far they're bringing that kind of energy a little bit of nerves I would say from Norfolk State here early on despite not having that big crowd in here there's Probably a little bit of butterflies, I have to imagine, in the Sparks player's stomach. I agree. Uh, this game means a lot to both teams, obviously. Uh, Coach Robert Jones with some comments in the days leading up to this event, and Old Dominion uh, looking like a very polished season team to this point, running their offense and, and playing with a lot of intensity on the defensive end. Monarchs, three of their first five. Norfolk State, over their first two. Here's Carter, couldn't get a shot off, kept his foot tacked down on the floor, however. And a three head of the circle by Mustafa Lawrence, and the Monarchs can't save it. So far, a lot of long shots and kind of settling for those long shots early on. A very little flow to Norfolk State's offense. It works best when there's penetration to the middle and then a pitch out for a three, a catch and shoot type of three. Too much uh, trying to create off the dribble at this point. Quick three off the inbound, a set play off target by Jenkins, who usually shoots them pretty well. Curry's been good early on, and he's a distributor this time, and a little bit of chatter for the bench from Joe Reese. Curry is so fast, so quick. He can create space with his dribble. You have to respect his ability to drive, and a, a beautiful feed there. Well, one thing Jeff Jones wanted him to do is not only continue to be a scorer, but be a guy that distributes the basketball more. Nice drive, a double team. Met Jenkins, cleaned up by Matthews. Matthews had it knocked away. J.J. Matthews is gonna be a big factor in this game. 6'9", he's a senior, has played at Towson, has played at Arkansas State. He's a well-traveled guy, and even though he's kind of being inserted into this crosstown showdown, he talked this week about the respect factor. He understands what it means growing up in Richmond and uh, certainly heard his teammates talk about it, and I expect him to have a big night. Wave it off, offensive foul. Nice job to stand in there by Zikpe to draw the charge. Yeah. Old Dominion really bottling up Norfolk State, clogging the lane, shutting off driving lanes, and forcing players to try to create something, go one-on-one, -on -one, and that's not what Robert Jones wants at all. They're going to check here. It'll be the first foul on the Spartans. I think there's a little confusion as to who it was called on. You know, in these games, Patrick, you, without a lot of fans in the building, you have to create your own energy, and certainly Old Dominion has done that in the early going. 
officially charged to Matthews. Now some pressure from NSU. Blocked from behind. Nice job by Matthews there on the defensive end. Matthews has it. High post. Takes the shot. First field goal for the Spartans here, and that's the icebreaker. Almost four minutes in. Kind of set up by Devontae Carter at least getting to the paint. Didn't get as deep as he would like. And you can tell that Old Dominion's got another defender waiting for him every time he drives. First make in six attempts for Norfolk State. Bit of a zone look here. Here's Curry on the crossover. High arching shot out of control. And it's going to be a foul on Old Dominion. Kalua Zikpe picks up his first. The Zikpe had 19 and 13 in their season opening loss at Maryland. And a timeout right at the 16 minute mark. We'll get our first media timeout of the evening. Jeff Jones with some words for the officials. Robert Jones with some words for his team. Slow start for NSU here at home early. ODU with the nine point lead. And this crosstown showdown powered by the Virginia Lottery. Back at Eccles Halls, we're getting ready to start and resume action here. Patrick Johnson, Brian Mall. Brian, first four minutes, what are you seeing? Old Dominion is running their offense, getting the shots they want. They're four of eight from the field and three of four beyond the arc. They've assisted on all four of their field goals. Pretty much a perfect offensive start for Old Dominion. Norfolk State needs to find some rhythm, become more aggressive. Tough catch by Jenkins on the baseline, and then they turn the ball over. During that break, they honored and recognized Kyle O'Quinn, member of that 2012 Norfolk State NCAA team that upset number two Missouri in the first round. What a great team, one of the best upsets in NCAA tournament history. Now with the 76ers starting his career down in Orlando. Double team, Old Dominion turns the basketball over. They took pretty good care of the basketball over the weekend against William and Mary, only eight turns, and then a foul and a reach in. Matthews will get tagged, unfortunately, for his second after the turnover. And a little bit of chatter between these two. Yeah, Matthews inadvertently with some contact to the face there, going for the ball. Officials are not going to review it. Doesn't look like uh, just two guys going for the ball, and Zeke Pate wasn't too fond of it. Old Dominion, four of their first eight. Three of four, though, from distance. 
Brian, they struggled a little bit from the three-point arc last year. It was an interesting year for Old Dominion, 13 and 19, but they were 500 in Conference USA. And for Jeff Jones, some mid-season transfers, a lot of injuries. You mentioned the injury to Wade. He also got hurt last year. So this was a team that played a lot of tight games and had a very kind of tight rotation for the Monarchs. They did. It was an uncharacteristic year. They've been so consistently successful since Jeff Jones has been here, coming off an NCAA tournament appearance the year before, and uh, really just seemed like everything that could go wrong did. Green gives it up top. Curry in the paint, drops it off. And the three, short. And it's going to be out of bounds. Reese couldn't save it. So it'll be Spartans basketball here. Norfolk State with three turnovers here early on. And a good look at Joe Reese there out of East St. Louis in Illinois. His dad played the Division II level at HBCU Fisk University in Nashville, Tennessee. Mustafa Lawrence splits the double team. Nice move. A little show and go. Kiss off the glass. Mustafa Lawrence gets his first field goal. Old Dominion trying to guard very aggressively on the perimeter, keep the Norfolk State guards out of the lane, and Lawrence there splits the double team. Beautiful play. That allows them, too, to set up some pressure. Old Dominion now getting into their offense inside of 20 seconds on the shot timer. No-look pass, picked out. Chavis in the game, kicks it off. Lawrence swishes the three off the wing. That's where the Spartans have been so dangerous in transition, pitching out for the open three-pointers. Lawrence continues to shoot the ball at a high level. He struggled a little bit in the first two games, but he's very capable. He was one of seven in their first two. They got off to the great 2-0 start. Big wins against JMU, and they christened their new building, and then Radford on a neutral court up in Harrisonburg. Here's the drive and the pretty finish. Curry will have an opportunity for two, uh, one more and a three-point play. He's just so quick, and once he gets past the defender's shoulder, there's not much you can do. He's becoming a better finisher around the rim, and there he's drawing the foul. He's a guy who should live at the free throw line with his quickness and ability to penetrate. Already the third on the team for Norfolk State. Mustafa Lawrence tagged with that one. And here's Curry at the foul line. Malik Curry had 24 points in 33 minutes against William and Mary. He's now got three. That was an 86-78 final. Norfolk State beating Radford 57-54. And nice off the glass. Pretty finish by Chavis. Yeah, just got downhill there on the corner. Clear lane to the basket and converts. Keonze Chavis out of Chesapeake. Seven points, probably their highest basketball IQ guy, according to Coach Jones. Off the elbow, the jumper too strong. And coming down with the board is Sadiba. Lawrence being defended by Alphys Polavios, who just checked in. Careless with the basketball there as we go inside of 13 minutes. Mustafa drops it off in the corner. Chavis with a three. Set up once again by Lawrence's dribble penetration. Old Dominion has to be able to contain the basketball in transition or Norfolk State's going to have open jump shots all night. Norfolk State on a 10-3 run. Whistle out in front. Robert Jones coming in with three subs here, and, and he showed in the first two games in Harrisonburg he, he's willing to go 10 or 11 deep. He trusts his bench. He's got a lot of veterans, a few newcomers who are very talented and can make an impact. And uh, they certainly have the advantage in depth tonight.
Estradios Caloyarius is into the game. You're going to let me say that one most of the night, aren't you? <laughs> Drive by Curry again, and he draws another foul. Curry can stop on a dime and then put it into another gear. Yeah, he's really just continued to develop now in his second year at Old Dominion after transferring in. Took him a while last year coming from the junior college level to, to get adjusted, but in the second half of the season, he was certainly their go-to player, which you always love that when it's your point guard, and uh, he's taken on even more of a scoring role early in this season. 75% at the line. He had 17 in the opener against Maryland. You know, Brian, last year he had to take on a lot of the scoring load with the injury to Wade, but he still had about a third of their assist last year, assisted on a third of their field goals. So he's an unselfish guy, but a guy who can also get you a bucket. Yeah, you feel good when the ball's in his hands, for sure, if you're Jeff Jones. Another open wing three for Chavis, this time off the mark. Austin Trice, who's checked in out of Chicago, former K-State Wildcat with the rebound. Curry, and the offensive putback up and in by Joe Reese, who's got eight early. Robert Jones will not be happy with that. Curry went from end to end, and nobody was able to stop him. He missed the layup, but he created the offensive rebound opportunity. Got an injury to Curry, and that stops the clock. Monarchs with the six-point lead early. It is the Crosstown Showdown from Eccles Hall. And you are watching it here, powered by the Virginia Lottery. I mean, if not, we'll just, yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. All right. Let's settle down now. Okay. All right. Perfect. Okay. I don't like this new side sidearm stat page. I don't. I don't care for it. Um, right. Okay. I'll move it closer. An early development here has been the Monarchs going a little bit cold, but a problem potentially for Norfolk State. JJ Matthews on the bench with three first half fouls. He got those pretty early, Brian. How's that gonna change things? You, I mean, Norfolk State will go deep with their rotation, but that was the guy they were counting on in this game of the season. And, and they have some size coming off the bench, but they don't really have another scoring option like J.J. Matthews. He's a guy who can run from rim to rim, who can work on the offensive boards, and they're gonna miss him. He's gonna probably have to sit the rest of the half. Monarchs have played eight so far, including Jalen Hunter, number 12, who's checked in for the first time. Aggressive drive by Carter, contact no call, and then a kick going to be whistled, and we're going to go the other way. They did a little work on Curry over on the sidelines. Looked like they retaped that ankle. He looks like he's okay, kind of trying to walk around over there now. Of course, Jalen Hunter can run the team in his absence. Hunter had a terrific game against William & Mary, knocking down three threes. Didn't commit a turnover. Work at middle of the floor to Trice. Now in the corner, Oliver. Oliver, whose dad played in the ACC at Virginia. Zone for the Spartans.
inside. Nice move in the finish by Trice. Made himself available, Brian, and they did a really nice job to get him the basketball. Yeah, Trice is a guy who's bounced around a little bit, but a big time athlete with a high motor, and, and they're hoping to have a terrific year. And that's a good answer on the other end by Anderson, who, who's been filling it up. Daryl Anderson, the sophomore, checking in, knocking down the shot. Five point Old Dominion lead. It's his seventh three of the young season. He was six of nine in the first two games. He, he really loves to shoot it from the wing in the corner. Up and under and a whistle. Hunter. You have a lot of guys on both sides that are capable of drawing contact. Well, this is the 20th meeting between these programs here tonight. Monarchs lead 13-6. They've won the last two meetings. 2015 and 16 at ODU and then in 17 and 18 at Scope, 61-50. Norfolk State hosted ODU in that 68-69 season. It was in 1969 in March in the Division II South Atlantic Regional and they played at Norfolk State College Gymnasium. It was a barn burner, Brian. Norfolk State won that one, 113 to 102. You know, I had the opportunity to talk to Old Dominion legend Dave Tordzik earlier this week, and he played in some of those games in the late 60s at the Division II level. And he, he said, you know, he couldn't remember a lot of the details from 50 years ago, but he certainly remembered the mood, the atmosphere, the energy in the building, high-scoring basketball, well played. And, you know, those were the guys you saw in the summer in pickup games and saw around town. You wanted to win those games for bragging rights. So I remember playing three games in, in one season even. Monarchs have gotten to the foul line five times so far. Norfolk State has not, but they loop in another three and another deep dagger from Anderson. You've got to guard that guy. He's 8 of 11 on the year behind the arc. I mean, absolutely instant offense coming off the bench. Brian, he's made 22 out of 30 in his career from deep. No yeah. heat check needed. Shoot it. He's open. Diagonal delivery should have been a travel. Quickly inside, Trice this time can't stick it. And we're gonna have a whistle. We're going the other way, foul on Old Dominion. Baseline official there with the with the quick whistle. I think he may have seen the same thing we did over on the wing and he wanted to make sure the ball went to Norfolk State. Second Spartans foul on the their defenses a little bit. Little man and zone, kind of a mixture of the two. Sometimes hard to identify exactly what they're playing. Norfolk State has not been bashful about the fact that they wanted to play this game and felt like it's not only a respect thing, but also that they've earned the right to play teams in the state of Virginia. Nifty move on the other end, put in by Reese, who's got a good one cooking here early. Well, when you look at what this Norfolk State program has done consistently over the last 10, 12 years, they certainly have a case. Uh, they're a postseason team every year. They're consistently among the contenders in the MEAC. Won 75% of their conference games under Jones. And it's a quality program. There's no question about it. Carter somehow got a shot off. Good defense. And the rebound taken by Zikpe. In transition. Can't get it to go. An offensive putback. And the score, Joe Reese, continues to be impressive. A dozen for the junior. Norfolk State has not matched up with him very well. There, Reese does an excellent job of running the floor, beating his man down the court, catching the pass, and finishing around the basket. Anderson tagged with the foul. Just to put a cap on this series and what we're talking about with Norfolk State, I mean, you look at the last decade, they've got the fourth most wins in the state of Virginia. And, I mean, you're talking about national championship runs, Sweet 16 runs, a top 20. I mean, perennial top 25 programs and then you have this program which is one and one at a high level under Robert Jones. The, the most difficult thing to do is be consistent from year to year. 
you know, because you're going to have roster turnover and folks graduate and that sort of thing. And, and, and the sign of a program is being able to do that, and Norfolk State certainly has. Chavis, too strong up top. And another one and done for the Spartans. Green, tough catch by Zikpeg. Up and under, shot blocked. Chavis, Carter, in the paint, hits it. First bucket for Devontae Carter, the senior averaging 13 and a half points per game. See if that gets him going to get something in transition. Yeah, he's the guy that has to ignite their offense. That shot by David Struther, who's checked in for the first time. Carter again. I love how aggressive he is. He's, he's very capable in the mid-range, which is something you don't see a lot of anymore in college basketball. Struther again, this time out of the corner. Chavis the rebound. Spartans could get it down to two, maybe one. The drive, the block. Here comes ODU. Nice setup, and Oliver hits his third from deep. A.J. Oliver has a sweet stroke. Every time it leaves his hand, just nice rotation, soft touch when it hits the rim. Really good shooter. Check that, Oliver, two of two, but Old Dominion now four of seven from behind the arc. Lead up to seven, and it is going to be a block inside against Old Dominion. It was very close to the restricted arc there underneath the basket. I've noticed this year that officials not wanting to give that call quite as frequently to the defensive player. It's a seven-point lead for Old Dominion. And that ODU foul against Malik Curry. Free throws when we return as we're inside of seven. It is the Crosstown Showdown, ODU, Norfolk State. And tonight's broadcast is brought to you by the Virginia Lottery back after this. I can't read that. Coming up at the half, WTKR Sports Director Adam Winkler with our halftime show. He'll also have a look at just how this series got put together. It will be wrapped up. It's a home and home here this year. First time Old Dominion has played on this campus in 50 plus years, this Crosstown Showdown. They'll make up the game or the return game will be at Chetway Arena across town in the 2022-23 season, which seems like it's eons from now with the way this year has gone. Patrick Johnson, Brian Muller, entire crew here. The first free throws of the game upcoming here for the Spartans right now in the form of Chavis. Yeah, that's pretty remarkable to go 13 minutes without a free throw. Uh, both teams shooting a lot from the perimeter. Norfolk State's four of nine from three, and Old Dominion is four of seven. It's actually Ford at the line. And those are his first points of the year. 
another big body that Robert Jones can bring off the bench. It's nice to have that post depth. Got the home roll and bounce on the second. See a little pressure here from Norfolk State. It's a dangerous proposition with Curry. You've got to be aware of him at all times. A kick. So they'll wave off the steal. Old Dominion spurred it out 11-0 in this game. Monarchs shot the ball well early on. They've gotten to the foul line. Right now they're out rebounding Norfolk State. Both teams have done a pretty good job of taking care of the basketball so far. Really the difference in the game to this point. Old Dominion's gotten four offensive rebounds, turned those into eight points. So they've really converted those second chances. You, know, you, you don't feel bad about giving up four offensive rebounds at this point. You just don't want them all to turn into, turn into baskets. Another aggressive drive by Curry, absorbs the contact, finishes the hoop and the harm, and he will head to the line. Boy, I just love to watch him play. He's so shifty, has such body control, that little stutter step, always moving laterally, so you can't take the charge, initiating the contact. And, and really impressed with the way he's been able to finish. Looks like he's gotten a little bit stronger since last year. Certainly has a, a look of confidence about his game. Headed for a big season for the Monarchs. Seven for Curry early in 11 minutes so far, and he's three of three at the line. Another note on the official scoring tally, we mentioned Matthews with the three fouls only officially has two, so they've made that correction. Curry gets it back, draws a triple team. Nice delivery, and Azikpe was looking for the fabulous flush, got hammered. Yet again, set up by an offensive rebound, now headed back to the line to shoot two free throws. Uh, nothing coaches hate worse than giving up offensive rebounds on free throw opportunities. That was a bit of a long one, but still, uh, those are 50-50 balls, and those can make the difference in a game, uh, any game. So a zip pay to the strike. Trice will get another try here. Finished fourth on the team in rebounding at K-State and shot nearly 60% from the floor. He's bounced around a little bit in his college career, but finally found a home here at Old Dominion and can play a nice role for, for this team uh, coming off the bench, spelling Ezek Pay, giving them another post option. Really like how hard he's playing. Pull up shot off target by Carter. There's a man rebound right there. Just went up in traffic and snatched it out of the air. That's one thing he can do. Squaring, shooting is Oliver, who's had the touch from deep, this time off the heel. Pull up in transition, Lawrence. And it's going to be a foul the 10th. This one's going to go against Ford for the push. A little overzealous there, trying to chase down that offensive rebound. Old Dominion's in a situation here in the final 554 where they could spend a little bit of time at the free throw line. And that's what you want when you're on the road. You want to get to that get to the free throw line, get in that bonus situation as early as you can in each half. Not only puts pressure on the other team because of their foul trouble, but it's the best place in basketball to score is the free throw line, the most efficient place. Nobody playing defense. Oliver now three for three on the young season. He's got nine. He was one of those that joined the midseason last year, played in their final 22 games, and averaged 11 points per ball game. Started his career at Clemson. A very highly touted recruit. His father, Anthony Oliver, was an excellent player at Virginia, played with Bryant Stiff. 
Old Dominion assistant. They were teammates there in the early 90s. And uh, A.J. is he's an excellent shooter and really an asset to the Old Dominion program. ODU's moved the lead back up to 10. Oliver, by the way, coming off a early season's best 19 against William & Mary over the weekend. Olympic State's been a while without a field goal here. Action away from the ball after that Carter jumper. Devontae Carter is so aggressive in the half court. If you're a throwback old school kind of guy, you have to love his game because he is willing to shoot a 16 or 17 foot jump shot. And the analytics people in modern basketball will tell you not to do that. But if you can knock him down like he can, why wouldn't you? Trice back in after a short breather as Zick pay out. Deep inbound in the 6'10 senior from Greece. Calogarius chasing it down. And a whistle, that one hung up for a little bit. Carter, who has that ability to draw fouls against JMU, he drew seven against James Madison in their season opening win. He loves to drive downhill. He's a big, strong kid. Really nice handle. Only the fifth on ODU, though. So they have one to give. And their nice job to split the double team. Carter down the boulevard. He's so good in the pick and roll there at the top of the three-point line, right at the top of the circle. He can go either way. He's Let's got eight. Brian, he's four of eight. The four shots that he's made, you might say, Whoa, the shots that he's missed you would consider good shots. He just likes to get the ball up. But Jeff Jones told us earlier in the week you know, he was concerned with Devontae Carter. He was the, what he felt like was the engine of this Norfolk State offense, the guy who could not only get points for himself but make his teammates better, and we've seen that from him already. Has an assist and four baskets. Daryl Anderson out on the floor. Devontae Carter looking for a pick from uh, Isaiah Chambers. A whistle and a reach in. That's going to go against Reese. That's two on Joe Reese. And the sixth on ODU. Important stretch for, for Norfolk State right now. They've battled. They've fought through that huge deficit early. And they, they need to close the half strong here and, and have a little momentum going into the locker room here in the last four and a half minutes. We've seen 10 players so far play for Norfolk State, which is not a surprise. One surprise would be we've not seen Joe Bryant. That was a, a little bit of we didn't know what his status would be. He only played 14 minutes the other night. And he, last year he averaged double figures and was their leading player in steals. Big, big piece of their offense, automatic at the free throw line. And, and Devontae Carter's heating up. Carter in double digits now for the 20th time in his career. Don't look now, Brian, but Norfolk State down 10 has cut it to four again. And Carter has pretty much put this team on his back, and here is the steal. Great anticipation there by Chavis. Carter up with the reverse. Couldn't finish, and the rebound taken inside by Trice. Monarchs have gone nearly three minutes without a field goal before that shot up and in by Trice. Really nice feed there to find Trice on the move, catch, and the easy finish there with his left hand. Here's Carter again. Works it to Anderson. Nice move inside. Chambers stepped on the end line. That'll be the fifth turnover on the Spartans, and we have a timeout. Spirited affair between these two separated by just 15 minutes. A car ride from campus to campus and a six-point Monarch lead in this crosstown showtown that is powered by the Virginia Lottery.
so we'll just interact at halftime and then uh, throw to break. I'm going to give you a chance to get into your uh, Ken Palm nerdy uh, stuff here. <laughs> I'm going to talk about what they did last year defensively and how they were a nearly a top 50 defensive efficiency team and all that. Norfolk State has trailed the entire way. They're coming off a 16 and 15 season, but they did go 12 and four, finishing tied for second in the MEAC. But you look back a year ago, Robert Jones had 10 newcomers to his roster, and yet they finished the year with a winning record, and yet they finished the year close to the top 50 in defensive efficiency. I don't know all those Ken Palm stats that you can quote, Brian Mull, but I do know this. They'll get after you on defense, and. They're, they're pretty good on the defensive end. That's a staple of this program. In doing my research for the game, I ran across a DVD that Robert Jones stars in called Floppy Defense, which is kind of <laughs> mixing a man and zone where the offense can't necessarily recognize it. Now, it may be floppy in, in name, but it's firm in the standings. They've been top three in the MEAC in defensive efficiency each of the last four years, and that's part of this program and a reason they have a winning tradition. Old Dominion, four of eight from three before that air ball. And stepping out, the Monarchs. So now it'll be Norfolk State basketball. Calarius, 6'10", 250-pound senior from Greece will inbound. We're going to roll it up to try to preserve some precious time here. Devontae Carter, 5 of 10 from the floor. Step back, and he'll pump another one in. You cannot let him get in anywhere around that free throw line. Uses the little jab dribble there to back off the defender, create some space, and buries it. It's a four-point ODU lead again. Corner three. Too strong. Battling inside Chambers. Coming away with it and laying it in with the left hand. Nicely done by Hunter. Yet another offensive rebound and put back opportunity for Old Dominion and, and, and making it worse for Norfolk State. That was the point guard, the smallest player on the court. Say he's a natural point guard and all 5'11 of him pulled down the rebound <laughs> and laid it in. His first field goal. Every time that... Norfolk State set to make a move. Old Dominion comes up with a bucket. Good answer Calarius there by Norfolk State. with the jumper there. Sorry, Brian. No, excuse me. Any offense you get from him is a bonus. He only averages a couple. For sure. Comes in there, plays his role. Defends and rebounds. Inside the strong finish by Trice. Trice is feasting. He's just finding the open space there in the middle, and they're doing a great job of feeding him, and it's quick to the basket once he catches it. I like the way he just turns and puts it up. He's three of three from the floor. Now Old Dominion in a zone. Corner jumper. A little too much rotation for Anderson. Anderson would love to, he loves to see a zone. Not able to convert that time. Monarchs running. They were pushing tempo, wide open three missed by Hunter. Carter, 
Couldn't uncork the spin or the shot. Flared it to the corner and the three up and looped in by Daryl Anderson. What a beautiful stroke he has. He loves the right corner. He torched JMU and Radford from there in the first two games. He's three of four from deep. Timeout, Old Dominion. We'll keep it here with 41.6 to go. Brian, that three-point shot is such a weapon. And when you have someone of Anderson's skill and height, 6'6", that's a big guard in the MEAC, a guy that can shoot threes. That's pretty impressive stuff. You can tell when he comes in the game, he understands his role. Coach Jones wants him to shoot the basketball. His teammates are looking for him. They're trying to get into the paint, draw the defense. He's ready to fire it up when he catches it. And what a, what a beautiful motion he has. Uh, nice rotation, long arms, can get his shot off at any time, and, and a real weapon for this Norfolk State team coming off the bench. Old Dominion, one and one, lost to Maryland in the opener, but then beat a young William and Mary team, 86-78, shot 50% from the floor in that game. And they also hit seven threes. They did a good job to out-rebound William and Mary in that one did ODU. They've got the basketball and their lead is three. This is the closest this has been since early on and a hand checking foul and it'll send curry back to the line it's already three of four there tonight just a pretty simple split of the top two defenders a little reach in foul there it's got a chance to add to the odu lead Malik Curry, who made his 35th straight start tonight. He was the only option last year, really offensively for this team, especially in close games. He had six assists the other night, but Jeff Jones felt like he could have had more. No doubt, no doubt. Just a little bit better decision-making, understanding when to go to the basket and when to look for a teammate. Spartans holding for the final shot. Carter with five from 15. The heave, and that's how we'll end the half. Spartans fell behind 11-0 early. They cut it to three. Old Dominion with a five-point lead going into halftime. And Brian, I think the second half could be really interesting between these two. Well, we knew we were going to have a good one, Patrick, and it certainly has delivered for the first half. I mean, if you're Norfolk State, you shot 48% from the field, hit five threes, and only turned the ball over five times. You have to feel good about all of those things. But really the difference is at the free throw line where Old Dominion was able to knock down 10 of 13, and Norfolk State only had a couple of chances. So uh, ODU uh, winning the battle inside, and that's why they have a five-point lead. Stay tuned. WTKR Sports Director Adam Winkler will have the halftime show after we return at intermission at Eccles Hall. ODU leading on the road by five. Yeah, it's out straight to me.
One minute. Welcome back to Joseph Eccles Hall on the campus of Norfolk State University. I am Adam Winkler. We are at halftime. Old Dominion leaves NSU 42-37. Tonight is the first men's sporting event held at NSU. That one? Do you know where it is? Right under the bleachers. Yes, yeah, it's underneath that TV monitor. Welcome back to Joseph Eccles Hall on the campus of Norfolk State University. I am Adam Winkler. We are at halftime. Old Dominion leads Norfolk State 42-37. Tonight's contest, the first men's sporting event held here at NSU since the Spartans baseball team played at home back on March 1st. Since then, teams are trying to find a way to beat their opponent and beat COVID-19. And the rims to which they are attached. Thank you. Inside the basketball gym, the basketball themselves out, are pretty much all that say, remain unaffected by COVID-19 as college hoops practice is overhauled amid the pandemic. It's completely different in its own way because it's just so much more uh, boundaries and guidelines we have to follow. At both Norfolk State and Old Dominion, if the chairs aren't locked up, they're spaced out. And before players put their paws on basketballs, that have already been wiped down. Their hands are sanitized upon walking into the gym, a process that has also altered. How you enter and exit the building, I mean, it, it all uh, is, is, is different. Um, uh, to, to say uh, it's, it's a different world is, is an understatement. The practice is tough. Coaches are mass, you know, it's like you, you got them up, you got them down, you know, stuff like that to try to blow the whistle. As for wetting your whistle, yep. Hydration has changed too. Before we didn't have water breaks, it was kind of like, you know, you have your bottles kind of around the gym and whenever you're able to get a sip, you just get a sip. Now we actually have to have like water breaks so people could go and pour a cup. Adapted practices, all part of team practices in preparation for game day. But in a global pandemic, the opposing team is not the only test. There is no game without first testing negative for the virus. Your heart is almost racing. And then if someone pop positive, then we're not playing the game. Everyone's praying, you know, that everyone's okay. And you just don't know because, I mean, it's so easy to catch. When you've got those and it's that close to the game, that, that, that really does have you uh, sitting there with your fingers crossed. It's tough to be perfect, especially in 2020. But teams like Old Dominion and Norfolk State hope practicing passing, both basketballs and tests, will make this season as flawless as it can be. Both Old Dominion and Norfolk State are two and a half games into the 2020 season. We are at halftime here at Joseph Eccles Hall. Monarchs lead the Spartans 42-37. We'll be back with much more, including a one-on-one -on -one interview with eight-year NBA veteran Kyle O'Quinn. That's when Old Dominion gets Norfolk State on WGNT continues, sponsored by the Virginia Lottery. All right, 2.30. All right, Kyle.
Welcome back to Joseph Eccles Hall Halftime. Old Dominion leads Norfolk State 42-37, joined by a very special guest, the pride of NSU, eight-year NBA veteran Kyle O'Quinn. What do your boys have to do in the second half to pull this one out? First and foremost, we got to score more points than they do, and that will get it done. But, you know, stay consistent, stay with the game plan, and keep playing tough and step up to the challenge. 2012 NBA draft pick, still the last player from an HBCU picked in the NBA draft. We talk to you every summer. You come back, you give back. You spend time with the team. We missed you this summer. How much did you miss that experience? I missed it more than those guys did. That's how I stay in contact, in tune with what's going on. The new recruiting class, just the guys' tendencies, how they get better over the years. So I think all in all, I missed it more than they did. You're the pride of Norfolk State, Kent Bazemore, fellow NBA player, the pride of Old Dominion. Uh, how many tweets, texts, all kinds of social media posts will he be blown up with after this game? If the Spartans win, which we will, he might have to block me tonight, just for tonight. I'm going to blow his phone up so crazy just because this matchup has never happened since we've been playing against each other in all these years. So tonight I'm going to be a little annoying on, 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 on Twitter, and I know he loves Twitter, so I know he'll be watching. Kyle Quinn, it's great to see you. Congrats on the Twins. You don't, look, you don't look as tired as I thought you'd be. <laughs> Eight-year NBA veteran Kyle Quinn. we're at halftime. ODU leads Norfolk State 42-37. More after this, sponsored by the Virginia Lot. Huh? Yeah, please. Welcome back to Joseph Eccles Hall on the campus of Norfolk State University. Halftime, Old Dominion leads NSU 42-37. The teams are back out on the floor. The Monarchs going through warm-ups. We are back after this. Patrick and Brian with the call. You're watching College Hoops on WGNT, sponsored by the Virginia Lottery.
Is he going to come over or do I need to? Yeah, for this. What do you want me to ask you, Brian? Um, what I what does Norfolk State need to do in the second half? Okay. Or, or, or why does why does Old Dominion have the lead? Something along those lines. All right. Just keep it pretty simple. Simple. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. We're at halftime actually about to start the second half. Patrick Johnson and Brian Mull with you from Eccles Hall. And it's an Old Dominion lead of five at halftime. What did the Monarchs do to get to this point? It seemed like they answered a bucket and answered a run with a bucket every time Norfolk State made a run at them. They did, absolutely. And, uh, you know, their, their offensive rebounding, Austin Trice coming off the bench, giving them seven key points they probably weren't counting on, and they really dominated the offensive glass. So what do the Spartans have to do, Brian, in the second half? Well, they have to keep the turnovers at a minimum, which they've done a pretty good job of, and continue to work the ball on offense. Now, don't settle too much and dribble. All right, second half action about to get underway here. Old Dominion, 42, Norfolk State, 37 is our score as we start the second half in this Crosstown Showdown, the matchup for the first time in more than 50 years being played here on the Norfolk State's campus. And a foul early. Great to see Kyle O'Quinn at halftime. Great job there with Adam to talk with him. What a great, great story, legend, career he's had in the NBA, just uh, carving a niche. Veteran now, and uh, he's, I know he's, he's just meant so much to, to the Norfolk State program through the years. Monarchs he's, continue to be pesky on defense, especially when NSU gets the ball in the painted area. And another aggressive drive, but this time Trice came up empty. There's Matthews shooting. showing what he can do there with that defense in the paint. Drive at a draw as Lawrence kicks it out. Here's a jumper on a turnaround by Matthews, who went to the bench early in the game with a couple of fouls. You expect him to run a little more through Matthews here early in the second half? I do. I have to think coming out of the locker room that getting him involved in the offense was, was a key point on the on the chalkboard there at dry race board there at halftime. Carter leads Norfolk State with 12, nine in the first half for Anderson. And we're gonna have a foul here. Norfolk State a little stagnant on offense. Kind of like they started the game. Carter playing with the ball a little bit too much there. Commits the turnover and the foul. Carter charged with his first. Jalen Hunter on the handle to start the second half. He gets the second half start along with Joe Reese. Yeah, Curry on the bench. Nice drive and a foul will be drawn. Green did not score in that first half. He was looking for his first bucket and took it aggressively to the hole. Yeah, he's, he's kind of the X factor for this team. He certainly has the ability. He's had a lot of good games during his career. I think he lost some confidence last year as the season unfolded. But at 6'6", as a senior, a guy who's been in the starting lineup for three years, there's no reason. Nothing holding him back. I mean, he's certainly capable of giving them double figures on a nightly basis. Green, perfect from the line this year, gets his first point. 
OD led by Reese in that first half with 13 on four of eight, five of eight shooting, make that in just 13 minutes. Oliver had 10 points in the first half, including a couple of three balls. Curry is on the bench. He's sitting, you know, and his, there's not a bench per se with the social distancing in place. But he's in his seat. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to speculate, but did leave the game there a bit hobbled in the first half. Interesting that he's not on the court to start the second half. Tyrese Jenkins trying to hand it off to Chavis, who spins it back. And Jenkins came up short. Both teams a little chilly to start the second half. Up and under, nice move by Oliver, who rattles it in. Such a polished, smooth offensive player. A dozen now for Oliver, and the lead back up to nine for ODU on the road. Lawrence had a hand in his face. And another rebound taken by Trice, who's been all over the backboards. That's his seventh rebound, a game high. Corner three. Floated away from Reese there. Carter trying to push tempo. No look. And a block is going to be called as Lawrence was on his way to the rim. Nice decision there by Carter. The defender was back. He drove to the middle of the paint, kicked to his teammate. Set up the free throw opportunity. Jalen Hunter with the foul. That's a big storyline here. Malik Curry on the bench. He had nine points in that first half. And now oh, here he comes. Lawrence comes up empty. Curry coming into the game. Mustafa Lawrence is an interesting player. He Started his career in the Missouri Valley, where he was a three-point marksman for Missouri State. Gets his sixth point. And then had game-winning heroics last year. Knocked down a three to beat Winthrop a year ago with Fresno State. Big games against UNLV and Cal out of the Pac-12. So he is capable. Jumper, right of the circle. Ring it up for Green, who gets his first field goal. Green, a former three-star recruit out of Williamsburg Christian Academy. And the lead back up to 10, matches its largest. Green really started to come on the end of his sophomore season on their tournament team. and They felt like you know, he was kind of the next go-to guy in the program. Lawrence with three on the shot clock, too strong. Entirely too much dribbling for Norfolk State, kind of what they did early in the first half. No, don't see the ball moving, see it getting stuck with one player. It's easy to defend. Oliver on the step back, off target. And all Jeff Jones can do is pace the sideline and summon for a substitute. Blocked. Carter had it rejected. Curry with the left-hand finish. Boy, he's so fast. Once he gets ahead of the pack, he is going straight to the basket. And it's... It's going to be a bucket. 24 against William and Mary in double digits for the third time this year on the young season. And the lead now its largest at a dozen. Inside. And a foul's going to be called. Brian, if you look at what Norfolk State has done out of the locker room and what they did to finish the half, they've almost gone five minutes without a field goal. And they find themselves down a dozen in this crosstown showdown. It's brought to you by the Virginia Lottery, ODU and Norfolk State, our under 16 media timeout. We'll return with more action in the second half coming up. <laughs> Look at this, they got a communication. I'm gonna come up here and teach communications. Huh? I'll come up here and teach communications. They got a school of communications.
through their offense as well out of the locker room. No, they have. They've looked very sharp, uh, keeping the ball out of the paint, forcing Norfolk State to make plays off the dribble. Norfolk State, on the other hand, impatient a little bit on the offensive end, not working the ball, moving the defense, working the ball from one side of the court to the other. And uh, they, 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 need to, uh, they need to answer this 10-1 spurt. J.J. Matthews will attempt a free throw. It was interesting to hear Matthews this week talk about, and you've heard a lot of college teams talk about this year, and just the accountability in locker rooms with this COVID-19 and the testing and the protocols. And there's a lot of that peer pressure in the locker room to walk that straight and narrow path, not put yourself in a position to, to expose yourself to the virus. And, you know, these kids are sacrificing quite a lot. Three out of the corner, Joe Reese with his first points of the second half. There's no doubt. I mean, college is supposed to be the best four, five, six years of your life <laughs> and uh, enjoyable, and the social aspect of it is certainly a big part, and they are uh, having a very unusual experience, but they want to play ball, and they know that they have to, to make some difficult choices if they want to be able to have a season. Good ball movement by Norfolk State. The three teed up, knocked down. Jenkins first field goal. By far their best possession the ball went from one side of the court to the other and ended up with a wide open three and he knocks it down there Lawrence a good looking he, shot he had a couple of threes in the opener and against JMU where he scored 11. Well they've got a beautiful building up there don't they brand new multi-million dollar facility for the Dukes three excuse me that was Jenkins three. on that last three for uh, Norfolk State Here's another three and another one for Anderson. Anderson matches his high, which he set last time out against Radford, and he's helped his team pull it back to within eight. He's now 10 of 14 on the season beyond the arc, and when you give a shooter like that as much time as he had there, it's going to result in three points. Well, Dominion a little ragged out of the timeout. Chavis in the ball game. Carter tried to whip it inside to Matthews, who lost it. They got it back. Carter kicks it out. Here's a three by Lawrence short. And after a helter-skelter possession, the Monarchs clear the board. Curry on the bounce. Nice feed inside, and the two-hand flush from Trice. Beautiful there. Matthews lost contact with Trice. And again, Trice is just running to the front of the basket. His teammates are making the pass there on the angle from the wing. Season high, nine for Trice. Timeout on the floor. And that will become a media timeout. We'll take it with 13.44 to go. Monarchs balloon the lead back to 10. This game brought to you tonight by the Virginia Lottery. Stay with us. Oh, no. Who won the football game today, Maul?
Old Dominion and Norfolk State. It's a series that dates back to the middle 1960s. We talked a lot tonight and all week leading up to this about the significance of Old Dominion playing on this campus for the first time in over 50 years. But there's a, another significant milestone with Norfolk State down 10 here as we make our way through the second half. The Spartans have gone 21 seasons since they last beat Old Dominion. They beat them at Scope 67-64 back in late December 1999, right before Y2K. Three, and it'll result in free throws. And because they don't get the opportunity every year, you know, you hope that you have a veteran ball club when the situation presents itself, and that's certainly the opportunity, you know, in front of Robert Jones and his team this year with, with so many returning players, with veteran guards, with a point guard like Devontae Carter playing this game on their home court here in Eccles. And they had every reason to believe that they could they could battle with this Old Dominion team. And certainly this game is well within reach. Uh, they're just going to have to be a little crisper on the offensive end and, uh, you know, work the ball inside to get it outside for some open threes. Anderson misses the first of three. He's too close, right? Four or five from the arc. Yeah, that's seven or eight feet inside his range. Like, he, he never practices from there, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Building with a couple hundred in attendance. Very quiet, and he just goes one of three on that exchange. Kind of sounded like the greens at Augusta where you were a few weeks ago. <laughs> it's very eer eerily quiet for a college basketball game just now, and it's just something that we all have to become accustomed to in this crazy 2020. Up top to green. That's the hole in this zone. There's a way to beat the zone. Curry with the layup and gets his own miss. He's fearless. Fearless driver. Took it right at the big fella Matthews there. Got met at the rim, but fights for the offensive board. Malik Curry passing on the three, slashing to the basket, couldn't finish. Trying to bang it in, Zeke Pay, who's not played a lot here in the second half. Tie up, Arrow gives it back to ODU, and Curry's frustrated with himself. See him walking out of picture there. There's a good look at Robert Jones. What a job he's done here. He's 0-2 against ODU, but he's won 127 games. I mean, here's someone who's averaging... Nearly 19 wins per year here at a MEAC school, and he's done a fantastic job. You talk to other coaches in the profession, and that's where you really get a, a real read on a guy is what their peers think of him. And universally, they have a lot of great things to say about Robert Jones. Not a team that they want to face. It's probably why he's had some challenges putting a schedule together sometimes because uh, opposing coaches know what they're going to get, a physical, tough-minded, defensive-oriented ball club that uh, – you know, is not going to, to go away lightly. And uh, their their consistency is remarkable. When you, you know, you can just pencil them in as a contender every year in the MEAC and uh, a team with an opportunity to, to win a championship and go to March Madness. They felt like they had a great shot last year. Shot clock inside of 10. Nice find, the three. Too strong by Hunter, and another opportunity and an offensive rebound, and they draw a foul, so ODU retains the possession. And that will yeah. be Jenkins' third. Yeah, that's just a matter of, uh, you know, one player wanting the basketball a little bit more than the other. Uh, can't stand around and wait for it to come to you. You've got to, you've got to pursue it, and capture it, and end, end the possession. Norfolk State's first shot defense has been okay tonight, but uh, they've just really been exploited on the offensive glass. And anytime you put your defense in a scramble position like that, you're susceptible to easy baskets around the rim. Euro Sidibe back in for Norfolk State. A three out of the corner is off. Nice job by Matthews to keep it in play. Spartans with Carter bringing it up. We want to get it inside, and a nice overplay. Oliver stretching the arm and coming up with the steal. Yeah, Carter needed one more dribble there to create the angle to make that bounce pass into the post. Oliver passing up on a three. 
Splitting the double team, Hunter turned it over. Norfolk State here at home. Really active hands by Old Dominion. I mean, scrappy, fighting for every loose ball. Didn't come up with that one, but really have to love their energy and effort. And they've been solid in the half court by and large tonight, defensively. They have. Nice feed. Late whistle. Going to go against Oliver. That'll be his third. Better ball movement there from Norfolk State. Move the ball, finally feed it down to the baseline. Create an opportunity. The nifty find from Matthews will result, result in a couple of free tosses when we return. It's a nine-point ODU lead. And this crosstown showdown from Eccles Hall at Norfolk State is brought to you tonight. It's powered by the Virginia Lottery. Um, that was a nice pass that uh, Matthews made. Even though he struggled with the foul trouble. Forty-five hundred is the attendance or the uh, capacity. Brian, Brian, with the new CDC guidelines, there's a chance that the canceled Norfolk State William and Mary game could be renewed. That's speculative, but we could see that. But Hampton up next for Norfolk State. That's coming up on Monday. Old MEAC rivals, they had many battles at the top of that conference through the years there. Of course, Hampton going on a couple of years ago to join the Big South. Speaking of old conference rivals for ODU, their next three games will be against former CAA foes at JMU on Monday and then at VCU on the 12th or the 13th in Richmond against George Mason. And speaking of rivalry games, uh, I had the opportunity to attend an Old Dominion VCU game several years ago when both were, you know, top 50 programs right at the top of the CAA. And there's no love loss there in that battle of I-64. So Dibbe at the stripe, Spartans are just five of nine here from the line tonight. So Dibbe yet to scratch in this one here this evening. When you're trying to claw back from a nine-point deficit, certainly can't afford to leave any points at the free throw line. That one knocks down the second one to cut it to eight point deficit. Be interested to see what type of energy they have in this little segment here after that timeout. Monarchs in the second half, shooting just 36% and a foul away from the basketball there. Moving Reese's screen. Third and it's a turnover. Yeah, yeah, moving screen there on Reese. Didn't, didn't set the feet. Uh, sometimes that's on the guard for trying to dribble too quickly. You have to wait and let your let your post player get set before you start to make your move. Both these teams have struggled with shooting the ball out of the locker room, but I think a lot of that is the effort that both are putting out there defensively right now. Yeah, absolutely. Both these coaches very defensive-minded. Pretty move by Chavis, but couldn't convert. And a Norfolk State foul. 
little better offense from Norfolk State the last four or five minutes. Uh, haven't, hasn't really shown up on the scoreboard yet, but I think uh, you have to be pleased if you're a Norfolk State fan with the shot selection. Just uh, got to convert and really got to make those free throws. Monarchs have done a really good job rebounding tonight, plus 11 on the backboards, and that was something that Robert Jones said his team had to do. They had to compete with Old Dominion rebounding the ball, and no matter what kind of lineup ODU is trotting out there, they're going to rebound the basketball. They really pursue it. They have nine offensive boards that have turned into 11 points. Carter yet to score in the second half. The ball will stay with Norfolk State. An important opening weekend for the Spartans in the Shenandoah Valley, though, Brian. Those were a couple of 50-50 games that they ended up winning, in your opinion. I think Robert Jones learned a lot about his team going up there to play a, a JMU on its home court in its new arena and then play a very solid Radford program, well coached by Mike Jones. and Norfolk State with the bucket there and trying to the small gathering of fans we have are, are, are starting to show a little enthusiasm, Patrick. Knifed it down to five after the pretty setup, Carter to Chavis. Now they need a stop. This has been the end of the floor when they've got it down to a couple of possessions. They've not made a play. Pass leaked inside, up and in for a Zeke pay for his first bucket. Nice two-man high-low game. Excellent offense there. You need a bucket. Who do you go to? Your post presence, Zeke Pays. He's been playing great all season. Been a little bit quiet tonight, but excellent recognition there. And we talked at the Open about a couple of veteran teams here, and Old Dominion has shown just how experienced and savvy they are as Carter starting to get the feels again as he's cooking after a nice move. He is such a... Such a momentum player, you can just see it. You can see the look on his face when he starts to kind of get that extra little bounce and rhythm. Chant of defense from the partisans in attendance here. Lob on the back door, the jam by Green. Excellent pass by Curry, the Norfolk State front court players fell asleep. Carter off the curl. They run two at him. You're not going to rattle him too much, are you, Brian? He's so good with the handle. Pushes it to the corner. Here's the three. Offensive rebound inside. Put in by Ford. Ford giving Coach Jones some nice minutes, really contributing off the bench for Norfolk State tonight. Just the fourth offensive rebound for the Spartans, but it leads to a big field goal. This time ODU can't convert. Chavis in transition. Draws the foul. Pretty stutter step move there just to freeze the defender, put him in a Vulnerable situation and exploits it, taking it up to the glass, drawing the foul. He got green backpedaling, and now he'll head to the stripe with Keonze Chavis, this redshirt senior. Local kid from Chesapeake. You know, Patrick, a lot of coaches talk about having depth and having bodies they can put on the court, but Norfolk State's got you know, seven, eight guys that, like they can go out there and get a basket for you in different ways. And what a luxury to have something, especially in this season of all seasons, depth is going to be extremely important. Nine points, seven rebounds for Chavis, now double digits. That's the fifth time in his career that he has scored in double figures. His high for his career a couple of years ago against Bethune-Cookman in a MEAC game, that was 15. That's now 29 of Norfolk State's points off the bench. More than half of their production. Big three on the other end for ODU. And that was Struther. You know, he hit a ton of threes. He was at UNC Pembroke a few hours away south on I-95. And 
was a thousand point scorer in his career and shot the ball well from deep. That was a big bucket. Here's a whistle. Yeah, big big time shooter. And Joe Reese called for his fourth. 7.26 to go. Spartans putting up some fight. They have an issue with that last call, perhaps. Robert Jones voicing his displeasure. Seven and a half to go. Our game tonight, powered by the Virginia Lottery. It's the Monarchs 62, Spartans 56. Stay with us. getting tagged with his fourth. He's had a big night here tonight, and he has to go to the bench. Yeah, that's uh, trouble for the Monarchs. He's a guy who's wired to score, six foot eight, really versatile, has shown that tonight, knocking down three threes, three twos, has a game-high 16 points, but the Monarchs are going to have to trudge on without him probably for at least the next three minutes, find some other scoring options. Carter, speaking of Wired to score, split the pair. Five-point advantage for ODU. They were up five at halftime. Led by as many as 14. Deflection, nearly stolen. Struther to the line, to the lane. Somebody got a piece of it. Carter. Almost lost the handle. Now they're going to run some offense. Curry matched up on Carter. Chavis with six. Pick and pop. Couldn't convert. Curry on a late whistle. Going to get hit for his second. Anytime you... A ball handler uses that free arm, it extends it too far away from their body, and the official's standing right there. Nine times out of ten, that's going to be an offensive foul. And that's the ninth in the second half for ODU as Flavios, who had checked in now, goes back out to the bench. Nice delivery on the cut. Anderson the lay-in. Beautiful play call there. Chavis hitting Anderson on the curl. Anderson receives so much attention on the perimeter because of his shooting prowess. Just runs off the screen there and has an easy layup. 
is the third occasion where they've had it down to three. This time Struther misses. They can tie with the triple. Norfolk State needs to be patient here. They don't have to rush a shot. They want to get a good shot. Pick and roll. This time converted by Sadive. His first field goal. It's a one-point game. Beautiful execution there on that pick and little pop to the baseline. Defender got caught in no man's land, guarding nobody. Takes advantage. The little 12-foot baseline jumper. ODU burns their penultimate timeout. And a good one, I think, by Jeff Jones here to get his team organized and settled. He leapt off the chair <laughs> when he saw how open that shot was. Just a miscommunication there by his two players. Something they've gone over, I'm sure, many times in the last couple of days leading up to this. It's an action that Norfolk State likes to run. They have so many big guys who can shoot the ball that they it's a very valuable piece of their attack. Well, for all of the back and forth in the media and the great packages put together by Adam that you saw in the local news here on three and also saw on our pregame and halftime, the great articles written by my guide, longtime friend David Hall, the Virginian pilot, all of that in the media this week. Here we are, one point game with 546 to go and Mo might be on the side of the home team right now. We love it when the game delivers, and uh, the, certainly a lot of hype leading up to this one, and the game is delivering here. See who can execute better down the stretch. Green the feed inside, and Trice in with an opportunity to try to send it in, draws a foul. I love what Trice has done tonight for Old Dominion off the bench on a night where Ezekpe has not really been a factor, only two points, but Trice has certainly carried the load in the paint, understands his role, stays really close to the rim, super aggressive when he catches it. Nice Trice. looking touch on that free throw also. Yeah, Trice now with a dozen. Good job by Old Dominion there, running the play that they wanted coming out of a timeout. Coaches love it <laughs> <laughs> when that happens. Trice took a peek over at one of the Norfolk State fans. Lead up to three. Carter kept the handle despite losing. A little Euro step. No, they're going to call a travel. Ninth turnover for Norfolk State. Yeah, tried to force it there just a little bit. Would have been okay to kick that ball back out, reset. Try to run another action, maybe a high pick and roll. Curry out there with Oliver and Hunter. They're the three guards. Green blocked. Loose ball. Getting away with the travel maybe was Carter. Pull up, too strong. Again, it kind of seemed like they hurried it there. On the other end, good look by Curry, just couldn't knock it in. These Norfolk State players want this game so badly, but they have to stay within the concepts of their offense, execute. Coach Jones barking out a play over there from the sidelines. He wants to see the ball change hands a little bit, move from one side of the court to the other create an open shot. Carter with 10. Now six, the step back. Rolled off the rim. Another rebound for Trice. Can't fault Carter for taking that shot. He's knocked it down several times. Good rebound there by Old Dominion. Hold, hold Spartans to one shot. Trice now a board away from a double. Actually, that was his attempt, so he's got a double-double. Nice ball movement, too strong on the three. Rebound collected by Carter on the miss. Carter blocked away. Robert Jones wanted a foul. 
and a sweet block. Sadibe with the return to sender. And Jeff Jones is up all over the officiating crew here. It's unhappy. So it's Xavier Green who uh, being attended to. He looks like he's okay. Oliver a little shaken uh, Oliver, up. Oliver, excuse me. Hot action here at Eccles Hall. A timeout. Three-point Monarch lead on the road. And the final 327. Do stay with us here as we're heading down the stretch. This Crosstown Showdown brought to you by the Virginia Lottery. Has uh, kind of become a grinder in the second half. You know, you expect it would, though. Yeah. Monarchs averaging in the middle 80s in their first couple of games of the year. We had a pretty fluid first half. Looked like we might be headed there, but this thing has really gotten to a bit of a defensive grinder here in the second. Still a very competitive and intense game. Three-point ODU lead over Norfolk State. Brian, the point guard play will be key down the stretch. It will be key down the stretch. It was a matchup that I anticipated. Before the game, it certainly delivered. Carter with 15 points and five assists for Norfolk State. Curry with 11 points, four assists for ODU. Whichever player can run his team better may make the difference in this game over the final three and a half minutes. Curry, Oliver, and he'll set from three and knock it in. Splash. 15 for A.J. Oliver. Once again, excellent execution coming out of the timeout. Found Oliver in one of his many sweet spots there on the left wing. and He's hit three of five from deep tonight. And we have a foul away from the ball. That's going to go on Chris Ford and be his fourth. Robert Jones is furious. Check that. Sadibe is going to pick up. The foul. Two men well, battling for position. There. So that's Sadibe's third. Can't afford Six any on the turnovers. Spartans. That's a look of disbelief right there from Robert Jones. A little bit beside himself. Reese back in with the four fouls. Tough catch by Curry. Side, the hook shot, good! Zeke Pei with his second field goal and the lead now eight. Once again, good offense. Feed the post. Let your center go to work. Carter shot blocked away. Curry running. Absorbs the contact. Swatted away. There to clean it up is the 6'8 junior. Yeah, this one's slipping away from Norfolk State. They really... Need a good half-court possession right here in a basket. 
Corner three is up. Spins off the front. Going to be out off of Anderson. ODU basketball. Brian, you talk about, we discussed it at the offset, teams with experience, and this is a Monarch team that played in a lot of close games last year, a lot of defeats. They've learned some valuable lessons from last season, and they're employing them here tonight on the road. They, they have. Uh, they, they've looked very calm and, and under control and with a firm idea of what they're looking for. Curry will go to the line. Yeah, he has a quick first step that covers a lot of ground and just puts the defense in a scramble situation. He does an excellent job protecting the ball, drawing the contact before the shot's blocked. Really anticipate him shooting a, a lot of free throws this year for Old Dominion. He's excellent at converting once he arrives there. Six of seven tonight. He's got a dozen, and now he's John with Carter. A little bit of banner here between our point guards. Curry feeling like he, he has the upper hand. Jeff Jones urging his point guard to stop talking. Did they pop him with a... Double techers are just a warning. I think that was a warning. Well, they said technical over the public address here, but it indicated, at least seemingly, that it was just a warning. Jones incredulous with his point card. 12-point <laughs> lead. Just doesn't want to do anything to give Norfolk State a breath of life at this point. And Norfolk State burns... The timeout here. Should leave them with one. Well, this was a one-point game just minutes ago, but the way that ODU executed the offense in the waning stages of this game appears to be enough for them to lock up the win. It certainly seems that way, a 12-point lead with Minute 40 left. They have to feel pretty good. And you're right. It came down to offensive execution, understanding who needed to get the ball where and when, and guys converting big shots. Thought that three that Oliver hit from the left wing is really the, the key to give the Monarchs a little bit of breathing room. And Norfolk State got a couple of pretty good looks, but they also wasted a couple of possessions as well. Brian, as far as ODU, obviously this would – Give them a couple wins in a row, move them to two and one. We mentioned the stretch coming up against the old colonial foes. Those are going to be some more emotional games. And all this before they get into conference play. And the way Conference USA is doing this, yes, that's a that's a plain league. There's no getting on the bus and uh, <laughs> going to a, a conference opponent. But they're going to play weekend games, Saturdays and Sundays, with the exception of ODU and Charlotte for the Monarchs. Everything's going to be two games either at home, at Chetway, or on the road. And that's going to be a little different, a little interesting. It is. And uh, Jeff Jones understood that he needs to develop some depth for those back-to-back -back situations. And I think he can be pleased with, uh, you know, what he's seen from Trice tonight off the bench and, and certainly what Hunter's been able to give him at times this season. If he can get that rotation up to nine guys that he feels pretty comfortable with, he probably would uh, feel like his opportunity is a little better going into conference play. Fourth for Zikpe, now Ford back to the line here. Seen a lot of Ford down the stretch. He'll get another. Well, for Robert Jones, and I mean, he's had one of the top win percentages in conference games of any coach active in the country. I only Mark Few and very few are ahead of him, and so. Yeah, you look at that list, it's like, uh, you know, he's in there with, he's keeping some pretty good company. Yeah. With, it's like a Hall of Fame induction. <laughs> but you got to like what the Spartans are going to be able to do and what is going to be a, 
kind of a, a different MEAC in the future? For sure. I mean, they, they uh, with North Carolina A&T leaving next season to join the Big South, certainly uh, you would think that Norfolk State and North Carolina Central will remain and continue to be the class of that league, uh, both proven programs and future's bright here for the Spartans. And it, this team has a lot of potential for growth. Still a few things to iron out. Um, I know they would – can't wait to get Joe Bryant back. I mean, no. And uh, – So Oliver hit the first. And the lights went out, folks. Believe what you saw. And we're in the dark. Well, someone may have set the timer and – it is 10 o'clock right on the nose. It is. <laughs> Chance to remind you to stay tuned for the WGN-TV news. Immediately following our show here. Lights back on. Oliver trying to shut the door. A.J. Oliver could be a real X factor this year for Old Dominion. Yeah, he has a lot of potential. I mean, just uh, not only a catch and shoot guy, but a guy who can make some plays off the dribble, high basketball IQ. As you see there, he can handle. Gets the Secondary ball, ball handler. Yeah, I mean, yeah he, he's very ver versatile and, and really fits with this ODU team. A lot of interchangeable parts. Well, Jason Wade, young man that was plagued with injury last year near the end of the year. They had so much planned for him this year and so many high hopes and just a terrible blow at Jeff Jones talked about that this week, just not just from a basketball standpoint, but from a interpersonal standpoint. They had seen him put in all of this work. Just hate to see it happen. I mean, here's a guy who was leading the nation in steals last year when he got hurt and just contributed to this team in so many ways, kind of their heart and soul, great defender, willing passer, capable scorer, and uh, – you know, it's going to take a collective effort to replace him. But it also means a tremendous amount of opportunity for guys like Joe Reese, for guys like Jalen Hunter. Four Monarchs in double figures tonight. Curry, a minute ago, knocking in his 15th. Chavis has had a nice night. He's got a dozen by my count. Yeah, he's been very solid. Well, Brian, I don't think as impressed as we have been tonight with ODU to come on the road, a lot of emotion in this building, a lot of buildup before the game and getting the win, but let's not sleep on uh, Norfolk State. This is a team that probably, as we mentioned, is going to have to kind of fill the reservoir back up quickly with the game against Hampton coming up on Monday. Yeah, and, and so much of their long-term success revolves on Joe Bryant's health. When they can put a guy who averaged 12 points a game, hit 53s last year, shot 90% at the free throw line. I mean, look at a backcourt of Bryant and Carter, along with guys that they have like Lawrence, the shooting ability of Anderson. Certainly um, not Matthew's best game tonight, but he's capable of being a double-figure guy, 7-8 rebound guy. I mean, there, there are a lot of tools at Robert Jones' disposal, and, and he'll figure out uh, the combinations, maybe tighten up the rotation a little bit as the season unfolds. But Norfolk State's going to be a – they're going to be a factor in the MEAC, MEAC race till the end. And some of the highlights from this one here tonight – Spartans 
Got it down to one point late in the game, but just could not get over the hump. ODU had a, an answer every time on offense. Now the Spartans scrambling, just trying to get a turnover. Oliver almost threw it away. Jenkins hit with the personal. And that's his fifth. He's the second Norfolk State player to foul out of this game. I, I think when Robert Jones looks back at this tape and thinks about this game and analyzes it quickly, as you have to do in a college basketball season before moving forward, he'll be disappointed in their energy coming out of the locker room at the beginning and the second half, their execution. And, uh, you know, they don't take lightly that Old Dominion's going to walk out of here with close to 80 points. That's not something they pride themselves on being a defensive first program, and uh, it's just difficult to win at home or anywhere else when when you allow that type of production. So uh, they'll they'll go back, tighten tighten some things up, and uh, I think uh, I think they'll learn, improve, and have a bright bright future. Brian, they have amassed 79 here just minutes ago of game time. They were looking like they were going to be stuck in the middle 60s. Yeah, really nice burst by ODU, certainly fueled somewhat by Norfolk State having to foul. But, yeah, this is the Oliver Monarchs. On the reach in, that's his fourth. Yeah, ahead, Brian. Monarchs just executed better down the stretch. And tight game. You look at a lot of the numbers are, are very similar. And, we talked about it during the week. We talked to Adam about it a little bit before the broadcast here tonight. And there are a lot of things that a coach could point to, why you don't schedule a certain team, that sort of thing. But you'd like to see this be a little more regular. You certainly, I think, with William and Mary in the neighborhood and Hampton, boy, it'd be great to kind of recreate a big four type of tournament with those programs. And in this kind of new era, where who knows where we're going to be with travel and college basketball. It just seems to make a lot of sense to me. What a great area for basketball and sports this is. And I think the communities and the fan bases of these schools would eat it, eat it up. No, no question. The tradition, the, the, the heritage of basketball in this region it speaks for itself. It goes on for decades and generations. And you have four quality Division I programs in proximity opportunity to, uh, you know, they do a fairly good job, of, but they should they, they should get together, play a. And I know you want it in the Hampton Coliseum for personal reasons. Well, I do enjoy the, I've had some good evenings in the Hampton Coliseum through the years, but uh, certainly it would be, uh, it would be great for basketball in this area, It'd be great for the fans, and, and a really good barometer for all these programs early in the season. ODU, 23 now of 26 at the line. They've been stellar from the strike. They were aggressive on offense. They took the ball to the rim. They drew fouls and they converted at the line. You score 20, 23 points at the free throw line. You add into that 34 points in the paint. A lot of those layups, that's two thirds of your offensive production right there. That's a pretty good recipe for success. Curry to the bench with a big night for ODU. Monarchs are gonna Move to two and one. And they prevent Norfolk State from their first ever three and oh start. In fact, uh, they will also fall to two and one. Patrick Johnson, Brian Mull at our uh, mezzanine level perch here uh, tonight. Thanks to the Norfolk State folks and also our great crew for uh, our setup here tonight. Uh, Brian, we talked about it near the end there. Big victory for the Monarchs here on the road. A game in which there was a lot of emotion, a game in which there was uh, a lot of hype, and it certainly lived up to it. Monarchs executed down the stretch. They did. Uh, they were the better team in the final five minutes. Uh, I think a game like this shows a lot about a team's character and resolve and toughness and, and willingness and discipline to execute the game plan. I thought Old Dominion did a terrific job of that down the stretch, getting the shots they wanted coming out of timeouts. Well, for Norfolk State, obviously, this uh, had great historical significance, and it's a building opportunity for 
Coach Robert Jones's program. It is, absolutely. They'll learn from it. They'll grow from it. They have a few areas that they need to address. They're missing a key player, but uh, pl plenty of bright spots. So there's a lot of talent on this team and uh, you know, plenty of room for improvement as well. Well, great job, as we mentioned, by our crew here tonight and the great hospitality for the people uh, bringing you this historic basketball game tonight. We thank uh, the folks here at uh, Norfolk State. For uh, Brian, I'm Patrick Johnson. Thanks to our entire crew working uh, hard here to make sure that this broadcast got to you tonight. Stay tuned. The WGNT TV News coming up next. ODU gets the win over Norfolk State tonight, 80-66. to The final from Eccles. It's all brought to you by the Virginia Lottery. Have a good night, everybody. Great, great job. Thank you all. Thank you all very much. Y'all made our life easy. Hope we didn't screw you guys up too much. <laughs> we had more great setup. No, this one guy is fine. Once we got going, it was, yeah. It's like everything else. Once they get going, it's basketball. You know? So this was good. Sometimes the prep, yeah, creates more anxiety <laughs> than the actual game. <laughs> Good. Yeah, we're glad well, to do it. Thank you, and if we can ever help you again, we'd love to do it. Yeah. yeah. Keep us in mind. Seen too many deer on the side of the road. I'm lucky that I never hit one. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean I just it's not yeah. so tomorrow's wasted if I drive home. You know, it's like I might as well just sleep here, get a good night's sleep and go home. Well and I've do a lot of morning radio historically and like I would years ago when I would do massive games, like drive up to George Mason after working. Do stay the night before, do the game. Miss one day of work because I would drive back, get back at like one in the morning, and have to be in the studio at three. So it made no sense. Yeah, it made no sense then. But I can't tell you how many times I left the D.C. area, whether it was Mason or Towson, saying to myself or telling my wife, "I'm going to drive halfway 